Hello friends, welcome to Limitless Life. I'm your host, Larry Hutton. Glad to have you with me today. Whether you're coming back for the many times, many if time, many time, <laughs> or your first time, uh, I welcome you and glad to uh, get to share life lessons, life truths, things that bring life to your finances, life to your mental and emotional state, life to your your health, uh, physical body, life in every realm. You know, a lot of times I'll tell people when they start hearing me talk about Jesus uh, and, and they may th- may not be wanting to watch what they think is a religious program. I tell them, this is not a religious program. Don't don't change that dial, man. I'm not talking religion here. I'm talking a relationship with a real being by the name of Jesus that wants to live in you. I played that religious game growing up. It didn't change my life at all. I still was sick in my body. I still had all the uh, negative emotions operating in my life. I still had financial woes. I just all kinds of messes through my life. But when I accepted the real Jesus, the one that rose from the dead, that wants to live in you, and then you live inside him, it changed everything. Got healed in my body, got free emotionally and uh, uh, just uh, financially free. Just in every realm, it's just been such a tremendous blessing to find out that there's a, a, a fake Christianity and a real Christianity. There's a, a, a fake religion called Christianity, then there's a real relationship with Jesus Christ that changes everything. So anyway, I'm glad to have you and uh, we'll get right into our program because everything we talk about, no matter what subject we talk about, it takes the limits off your life. And that's why we call this program Limitless Life. So um, many years ago, I'm going to recap, we started a series last week, we're going to continue this week. Many, many years ago, I had uh, an encounter with the Lord Jesus, and he told me, he said, I'm going to show you in my word, for those of you that may not know what the word is, it's the Bible, it's, it's, the, it's the living uh, essence of God himself, of Jesus himself that's in written form for us to uh, learn from. He said, I'm going to show you in my word what to do, and if you do it, you'll never have another down day the rest of your life. No more blue Mondays, terrible Tuesdays, wicked Wednesdays. He didn't say that. I'm just adding that part. But anyway, he said, he went on, he said, if you'll, if you'll do what I show you in the word, be a doer of the word, he said, then your days of stress are over, your days of worry, your days of depression, your days of discouragement, your days of hurt feelings, your days of bad temper and anger, He said, all those days will be uh, days of the past. He said, you'll still have those negative emotions come against you. But when they come, he said, you'll be able to keep them as a moment. In other words, you'll be able to get rid of them. They'll come, they'll be there for a moment, and you'll get rid of them. You won't let them stay. And so I started doing what the Lord taught me. Excuse me. And... uh, just one day at a time, because, you know, when you're thinking, I'll never have another blue Monday the rest of my life, you're thinking, is this even possible? But the Lord showed me in the Bible what to do, and so I started doing it just day after day after day after day. And like I shared before, uh, all of a sudden, I looked back and realized I had put 365 of those one days together and realized I haven't had a down day in a year, haven't had a stress-filled day, a strife-filled day. I haven't had a bad temper, anger-filled day. I haven't had a get-my-feelings-hurt-filled day. I haven't had a guilt or shame-filled day, frustration-filled day. Uh, All those depression, discouragement, all those kind of days that go with the negative emotion realm, I didn't have any of those. Now, I had the moments where all those feelings came, but the Lord showed me what to do to get rid of them. And I found out, you know what? I don't have to yield to anything that's part of the kingdom of darkness since Jesus defeated it, defeated him, defeated Satan, which was uh, the head of the kingdom of darkness. And so he defeated Satan. He defeated the kingdom of darkness. He defeated, defeated all the works. So since there's works of darkness in the earth, but Jesus defeated them, really what that means is he set you and I free from them. He loosened us free from them. Once he bore our sins on the cross, then that changed everything. Then you can go back to the garden 
when Adam sinned, that's when curses came into his life and curses came into mankind's life. But once Jesus, the last Adam, Paul, the Apostle Paul in Corinthians re refers to Jesus as the last Adam, when the last Adam bore our sin, the sin of the first Adam, uh, then you and I got set free from sin, and now sin no longer has dominion over us, which means every curse associated with sin no longer has dominion over us. And so we can actually live free from every negative emotion because that's part of the kingdom of darkness. That's part of Satan's kingdom. And uh, you and I have been redeemed, uh, loosened from that, set free from that kingdom. So in this particular series, the subject matter that I am focusing in on is your emotions, your feelings. Uh, in other words, your your mental state in any given situation as you live your day-to-day -day life. God wants you living free from all negative emotions. So that's why I titled this, this series starting last week. I titled this series, Negative Emotions Conquered. Negative Emotions Conquered. And then I, uh, we shared all last week. We won't have time to go back over the scriptures, but we, we are stewards of our mind. And so if you were going to put a subtitle on that, on this series, Negative Emotions Conquered, you could subtitle it, You Are the Steward of Your Mind. You don't have to allow your mind to be dominated by negative emotions. Better yet, you don't have to let your mind be dominated by seat, Satan, demons, evil spirits, they've all been defeated. They've all been, according to Ephesians chapter 1, all been put underneath the feet of the body of Christ, which is the church, the fullness of God that fills all in all. So you're the steward. The mind is uh, the devil's battleground. You may have heard that before. It's since he's been whipped, stripped, made a show of openly, then the mind is the devil's battleground. The mind is is the breeding ground for all things that will end up ruling your life. I'm going to say that again. The, the mind is the breeding ground for all things that will end up ruling your life. In other words, sending your life in a certain direction, whether good or bad. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart or his mind, so is he. Uh, the thoughts you dwell on are going to send your life in that direction. And we've talked about all that last week. So let's move on. Let me remind you again the words. I think toward the end of last week we were talking about the, the words that describe the emotions of the kingdom of darkness versus the kingdom of light. Uh, the kingdom of Satan versus the kingdom of Jesus. So let me remind you, first of all, the emotions... Uh, the feelings of heaven, okay? These, these are the feelings that God, remember, we found out he wants his will to be done on earth, in your life on earth, even as it's in heaven. So you don't have to wait to get to heaven to enjoy heaven's blessings. We've found out Ephesians 1, 3, we've already been given all of heaven's blessings. But here's the emotions, or here's how your feelings should feel and you can actually control them to make them feel this way. Uh, God's given you the ability to do that through the power of choice. So here's the emotions of heaven that, that you can operate in 24-7, 365. Joy, peace, calm, rest, comfortable, relaxed, happy, serenity, tranquility, Composure, gladness, laughter, harmony, content, and fulfilled. I tell people all the time, you can live a fun, happy, fulfilled life. Just like Adam and Eve did in the garden before sin, you could do that. So those are the feelings God wants you to live by. But here's the negative emotions, the feelings that unfortunately a lot of Christians operate in that are, they, they're redeemed from. You're redeemed from negative emotions. But here's the negative emotions you're redeemed from, all part of the kingdom of darkness. Depression, discouragement, guilt, shame, worry, stress anxiety, fear, 
anger, bad temper, strife, frustration, hurt, agitated, uh, upset, disturbed, discord, animosity, bitterness, unhappy, and unfulfilled. So is it possible to live free from all those negative emotions? Most people think, oh, come on, get real, Brother Larry. That's not even possible. Well, that's what I thought until the Lord Jesus personally taught me this. I never learned this in, a, in Bible school. I didn't learn it in a, reading somebody's book, listening to somebody else minister a sermon or something. I learned this from the Lord Jesus himself. And when I started doing what he showed me in the Bible, that's the key is, is the Lord showed me the word of God what to do. So it wasn't like I was getting some weird uh, experience that I saw an angel or I saw Jesus or I heard an audible voice and all those things that were apart from the Word of God. That's the key. If, if somebody ever has a supernatural experience, you, me, or anybody else, if, if I don't care if they say they've been to heaven 10 times or 50 times, if, if what they're saying doesn't line up with more than one verse in the Bible, it's got to be in the mouth of two or three witnesses taken in context and then verified by other scriptures. Um, so when the Lord showed me this, I started doing what the Bible said, what the Word of God said, and it worked. It was amazing how smart Jesus was. He taught me the Word of God. He said, if you do it, Larry, it'll work for you. So it came down to me not just being a hearer of the Word, Jesus and the Word are one, not just being a hearer, but being a doer of the Word. So is it possible to live free from all these negative emotions that I just listed? Jesus told me it was, but he said, he said, but it's in the realm of all things are possible to him who believes. So we have to believe the word of God. The word of God has to be our, our, our foundation. So the purpose of these lessons is to build a foundation in you so that you can live this type of of glorious lifestyle, garden of Eden before sin type lifestyle. Amen. So we're going to use the word of God to build that foundation. So let's go to Isaiah 32. Turn to Isaiah 32. And let's start reading in verse number 13. Isaiah 32, 13. On the land of my people will come up thorns and briars, yes, on all the happy homes in the joyous city, because the palaces will be forsaken, the bustling city will be deserted, the forts and towers will become lairs forever, a joy of wild donkeys, a pasture of flocks, until, until, now all that bad stuff was happening, until the Spirit is poured up, out upon us from on high. Remember that happened in Acts. Oh, glory to God, the Spirit of God. Jesus told us in John, he said in John's gospel, he said, listen, uh, it's going to be beneficial. King James uses the word expedient. It's going to be beneficial that I go, go leave here, leave the earth, because I'm going to send another comforter, the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, he's going to not just be with you like I am. He's going to be in you. And so the Holy Spirit was poured out. Verse 15 says, Until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is counted as a forest, then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field, which we found out in the New Covenant. When you accept Jesus, you, re you receive His righteousness, and it remains in you. Uh, and verse 17, the work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places. Boy, I love this passage. But let's see where we're in on those last two verses. Let's, let's look at verse 17. It says, because God has put his righteousness in us, it works his peace in us. Isn't that good? You've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus if you've been born again. And the, and the uh, work uh, of righteousness, his work is peace in us. Therefore, we can work his peace in us 24-7, 365. And it goes on, and the effect of that righteousness is quietness, which is a rest. Even in the middle of the storm, you get to be like Jesus. You get to rest. And it says, and assurance. 
And this word assurance, if you look up the Hebrew, it means security, it means confidence, it means boldness. So God wants you to have a, be secure, uh, a confidence and a boldness. And then verse 18 says, we will dwell in a peaceable habitation. Dwell. We will dwell. <laughs> I like that. We dwell. In other words, we're going to have a home where we dwell, a home filled with peace. Mm, peaceable habitation. And it goes on, and in sure dwellings. Sure dwellings. That's our home, our jobs, our businesses, and, and even our churches is where we may, uh, may be dwelling. God says, I'm going to give you a, uh, a security detail <laughs> where you're going to be, you're going to have security, you're going to have confidence, you're going to have boldness. So that's God's security detail on watch no matter where we go. And it goes on to say, in quiet resting places, no matter where you are, that place can be a place where you are at ease, you are operating in peace, you're, you're just bringing peacefulness and rest into the very atmosphere. Boy, it kind of sounds like God wants us to live in a continual state of mental peace and tranquility. Amen. And I'm going to be showing you that. In fact, we'll start that right now. Let's go. Let's turn over to Numbers chapter 25. I want to show you that we actually have a covenant with God called a covenant of peace. So I want to show you that. And I'm going to show you uh, three scriptures if we have time before we run out here to this program. But let's go to Numbers 25 and start reading in verse number 10. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phineas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the high priest, or the priest, has turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. While he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consume not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, behold, I give to him, watch this, my covenant of peace. Hmm, covenant of of peace. Keep that in mind as we read the next next passage that I want you to see in Ezekiel 37 verse 26. Ezekiel 37 verse number 26. This is in King David's day and the Lord said, "Moreover, I will make a what? Covenant of peace. You need to underline that in your Bible. Make a covenant of peace with them." Now watch this. It's going to be a fleeting covenant, a temporary covenant, no, an everlasting covenant with the children of Israel. And I will place them and multiply them and I'll set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. In other words, in the new covenant, I'm going to actually live in you. I'm going to set it inside you. You're not going to just build an outward tabernacle, an outward church building. I'm going to actually live inside you. But notice again, it's called a covenant of peace. I like that. Now, with that in mind, both of those scriptures, covenant of peace, go to Isaiah 54.10. Isaiah 54.10. Because Isaiah here in Isaiah 54, he's actually prophesying about our time. And you can go back to chapter 51, 52, 53 before you get here and you can see it's all prophesying about what Jesus was going to do on the cross and through his resurrection. Uh, so here in Isaiah 54, 10, he's prophesying of our day. He says, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Thank God for his mercy. If it wasn't for the mercy of God, we'd all be consumed, right? <laughs> but notice he said, my, my kindness will not depart. God is always going to be kind to you. That's how much he loves you. But I love, I love the fact that he said, my covenant of peace will not depart from you. So that means we have a covenant of peace with God. Just like under the old covenant. In fact, we have it better off than they do. We can see that in um, Hebrews chapter uh, 8 verse 6. So God has made a covenant of peace with us. And when God makes a covenant, he doesn't break it. In fact, before we run out of time, let me show you that. God made a covenant of peace with us and he will not 
change his mind. He will not break. He will not annul that covenant. Look at Psalm 89 and verse number 34. Psalm 89 and verse number 34. It says, My covenant will I not break. Wow. Nor alter the thing that is that has gone out of my lips. I'm not going to break my covenant. I'm not going to alter it. In other words, if I said I gave you a covenant of peace, then I'm not going to alter that and say, you know, there are times you're just, you know, life be real. Life is just a bummer. Sometimes with all the messes and all hell breaks loose, you know, you're just, you know, you're not going to be happy and you're not going to have fun and you're not going to be fulfilled and you're not going to have peace. You know what? I found out God's happiness is totally separate from the world's happiness. Oh, I hear people all the time, Christians, saying, you know, you're not going to be happy all the time. You can be full of peace and full of joy, but you're just not going to be happy all the time. If you'll actually study out the word happy through the scriptures, Hebrew, in the Hebrew uh, and in the Greek, you'll find out most of the time the word is translated blessed. So when I hear somebody say, no, you, you're not going to be happy all the time because happiness is fleeting. It's a feeling. No, 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 no. I'm blessed all the time. So I can be happy right in the middle of any storm. And I found out it works because I believe that. Now, if you don't believe it, obviously it's not going to work for you. But according to your faith, be it unto you, Jesus said. So I love this Psalm, Psalm 89, 34. My covenant will I not break and I'm not going to alter what I've said. If I gave you a covenant of peace, in fact, later on, probably later this week, we'll be finding out he's actually made a way for you and I to live uh, in this peace. And it's actually referred to in Scripture as the way of peace. So I want to encourage you. You can live in this way. In fact, I've been <clears throat> announcing a few products that I encourage you to get. If you don't have the Power Up recording, it comes in CD like I'm holding it up, but you can also download it on in by MP3 on the website. Just uh, go, to, go to the website and purchase it, and then you can download it. But this Power Up, I had a couple come up to me and said, man, we, we started... Uh, listening to Power Up every morning. They, this was like for seven years before they gave me their testimony. They said for the last seven years, we've been listening to Power Up. We got uh, this um, uh, CD player that, that has an alarm clock on it. And uh, they said it, it wakes us up every morning. In fact, they said we even set it on our days off so that we can be woken up. They said because what we're doing by listening to Power Up is we're setting the precedent of every day. And the Power Up uh, recording is nothing but me quoting victorious living scriptures. So living by victory and overcoming and being more than a conqueror and living by faith and not walking by sight, walking by faith. And so they did that. And then they came up and told us a testimony after seven years of doing that. They said, our last down day, our last depressed day, discouraged day, stress-filled day, worry-filled day, and they named all those negative emotions. They said, our last of those days was seven years ago when we started every morning waking up with victorious living scriptures called Power Up. So if you don't have Power Up, I encourage you, go to our website, order it, uh, uh, LarryHutton.org, LarryHutton.org, and you can just click on store and then look at all the different products and order whatever you want. But that's a way to do it. Or call our toll-free number. I tell people that's the easiest way if you want to become a partner, if you want to give a donation to help us reach more people, or if you want to order product, call our toll-free number, 888-887-WORD. Notice word. That's what I put at the end of our phone number just because I wanted this ministry to be known as a ministry of the Word of God, the Word of life, limitless life. Praise God. So 888-887, the number seven is perfection. So after you do all the toll-free stuff, 888-887-WORD, which is 9673. 
we have somebody answering the phones 24-7, 365, holidays, middle of the night, doesn't matter what time zone you're in. So if you want to order something, give a donation, become a partner, up your partnership, whatever, you just call the toll-free number and they'll help you. I've just had people uh, contacted me recently, said, Larry, I need to update my credit card. That's the easiest way to do it. You can update your credit card by calling that toll-free number. Again, toll-free number is 888-887-WORD. <clears throat> and uh, also, I give out my personal email only for, for testimonies and praise reports. So if you have a testimony or a praise report, something you'd like to share, maybe you've been to my meetings personally, maybe you've listened to our te television broadcast, maybe you've gotten our materials and, and listened or watched, maybe you've been on YouTube and watched, however, um, you've had your life changed and you'd like to give us a testimony or praise report. My personal email is my initials, Larry John Hutton. It's LJH, this is my email, LJH at L h m dot net l j h at l h m dot net and i tell people that's not for anything but testimonies and praise reports so if you email me and ask me re questions or rebuke me or whatever you're not going to get any response because my personal email is just for testimonies and praise reports so if you have one from you or from somebody else we'd love to hear from you ljh at lhm.net we're out of time so we'll pick back up here tomorrow we love you we call you blessed and until then have a wonderful jesus filled day if you would like to schedule larry hutton to speak at your church event or conference Go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Do you ever feel like you're riding a non-stop emotional roller coaster through life? Do you want to stop the seemingly endless ups and downs and rounds and rounds? Then it's time to learn what God has to say about getting your feet and your emotions back on solid ground. It's all too easy to let life's events, experiences, and circumstances dictate how we feel, speak, and act. But God gave us a much better way to live. Larry Hutton's life-changing book, Internal Affairs, and CD series, Free From Me, will give you the Bible answers and show you how to keep every negative emotion under complete control, all the time, in every situation. You will learn how to overcome all your negative emotions and live in peace all the time. To order Eternal Affairs and free from me, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673. Experience more of God's goodness by joining Larry Hutton again for more simple, practical teaching in God's Word. Go to LarryHutton.org anytime to watch this broadcast and many others. You'll also find special offers and other resources to help you thrive in life or check on Larry and Liz's schedule so you can join them at a meeting near you. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-9673.